right, we're looking at the first exercise, the first patent development exercise in NZME 360. So, um, as you can see here, we've got a cylinder on a cylinder, um, the intersecting in the middle, it's got the uh, 90 degree cylinder, the 100mm diameter, main cylinder, cylinder, same diameter there. Vertical height of the cylinder 65, so that'll be that height there. Cylinder length 175, that'll be that distance there. Um, 0.8mm steel, so not worried about that for the pattern development. Um, we've got a number of the patterns clearly. Calculate the circumference. Right, so I'm doing this on a bit of A3, so I don't have um, access to a workshop right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that view there to get some points from it. And I'll also draw that view, but I'm going to draw that on the other side. So that'll just make it easier for me to use this pattern. Right, so the workshop you'd probably grab yourself a nice big 600mm ruler for this one. Just want to draw yourself a line, try and keep it square with the sheet, and square up a line here. So you'd obviously use a big set square in the workshop and divider, center punch, and all that sort of thing. So I'm doing the uh, end view over here for now. So because <clears throat> I'm doing, um, I'm going to do half scale so it fits on A3. So I'm going to give it a diameter of 50. So I'm going to just draw a line up at 25mm across, so the radius, 25, and I'm going to draw this line straight up and down here, that's going to be my centre line of that end view. Now <clears throat> I'm just going to draw a mark up. 25 and 50 and if we think about 62 oh, 65 sorry from here to here if we divide that by 2 that's 32 and a half so 10 20 30 and a half so 82 and a half total and I'm going to bring those lines across a wee bit there Actually, drag these out a wee bit because I'm going to use them in another view. And I'm going to measure out the diameter here 50. Square that down off that main line there. I'm going to put a little bit of a gap, say 20 mil between this and the next view. And I'll bring that up square as well. Now we've got a length of 175, so if we do 1 to 2, half of that will be 87.5. Here to here. So let's draw that out.
and we've got to think about our halfway point between the two so half of 87.5 is is 43.75 so let's put a line there draw that all the way up and 50 mil diamond again so i'm going to go 25 that side 25 that side square those up so there's a lot of lines going on here at the moment Hopefully we'll get a bit clearer in a minute. So, <clears throat> that there is going to be this view. That there is going to be this view. So now what I'm going to do is go around and darken the um, outline on this one. So if I was working on metal, I'd probably highlight that with very fine tip vivid. Um, you'd want to be drawing it with a scriber. You don't want to draw it with a pen to get um, fully accuracy, but it's all good to highlight the parts so you can sort of ignore some of the lines that you don't need. And so this side, We've got a circle in the end view, so let's set up the divider here, compass, divider, depends what you're using. And always pays to double check that, so slight, I've got a slightly undersized there, so I'm just going to Rub it out. Come back and just increase the size a little bit. that's looking better now I'll darken the edges of it so you can see our two views there now what I've got to do is put some marks in here. So what we do, generally speaking, with sheet metal, is we've got to divide it up so you can get a whole bunch of reference points so you can make a nice pattern out of it. And it just so happens that if you arc the circle like this, and then you 
arc from the edge and the other edge and from the center here and the center there so happens that you divide the circle into 12 so that's half the circle so there's six segments there so let's draw these lines down And what you would notice is because this is the same to same, the same diameter to same diameter, if I did the same thing here, these lines should match up. So this isn't always the case. So, I mean, if you're doing one that's a different diameter to a different diameter, these don't match up. You have to do a bit of an extra step. All those points should line up like so. There. There, 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 and there. And we can actually just transfer them across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer them across the whole way because I'm going to develop a pattern out from here. So we go all the way across. All the way across again. From the top. and also the center line now <clears throat> we go up from those points so what I'm going to do is show these points on here just to give you an idea of where these links are coming from um, you could do that semicircle thing over here and get these more accurate which is what I'd suggest you do but for this particular thing it'll be completely fine um, working on a drawing board is, is a, you know a bit of an advantage we're doing it on sheet metal you definitely want to redo these points up here and bring them down again so you see we've got some lines going along all the way along the sheet and I'll do the top line as well. And the bottom one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pattern of this top part of the branch here. So Generally speaking, not always the case, but you put the seam on the short side. Because if you think about it, if you're welding, you'd um, want the weld to be as short as possible. Um, it depends what you're doing exactly, but that's just where I'm going to put it. So all we need to do from this point is we get this bit here and we square a line up like this. That's going to be the start edge. <clears throat> now we've got to do a bit of a calculation. So we're going half scale. So we're going to go 50 diameter. 50 times pi is 157. So I'm going to do a 157 long pattern here. So yeah, just right there. And another good idea at this point is to divide that by 2 and put in your halfway between those two. So 78.5. Same thing again, draw these lines straight up. So now we have a nice accurate length for this pattern. The thing we can do here is we can use these 
increments, which are one twelfth of the circumference. We'll grab one of them, and it always pays to just walk it round, check that it matches the next point and the next point, check that it's not creeping and growing really big or shrinking or anything. Um, just check your accuracy, really. So now what I can do here is, I've got half, I've got half, I can do six parts here and six parts here. So I'll just step out along this line here. And you can see, if I scribe a line there, it's about a mil and a half off. So that's where this um, calculating comes in handy, because if I'd just gone 12 steps, I would likely be, you know, a couple mil off, which could matter a lot for the pattern. So anyway, I'll carry on from there. Now I've got to do the same thing with all these lines, so I'm going to draw them all up. Do it around this way this time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a label on these bits here. So, what I would like to do is I'm going to just go from, what I'll do is actually, is I'll go 1, I'll go that 0, that point there, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, five six so that's half i'm going to half the view there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start at zero go zero one two three four five six and then if you imagine this is going into the page and back again it'll be five four three two one zero so i'll label these ones here as well zero one two three four Six to the middle, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So now we've got that roughly laid out. This is the top, and that will be the bottom, that line there. So we're starting at zero, so all we do is follow this line zero to where it meets here. So that's We'll call that A, B, C, D. So where it meets A, and that's our start point. So here's our very first edge of our pattern. And we can just sort of follow it along. So we can go down, up, down, up with this one. Um, you can do that with most of them. It just always pays to be checking because you never know you might miss something. So Go to B, here's our next point, go to C, the next point, D, as you can see it's coming down, so now it's going to head back up, and I can just plot my way along here, like I say, and just keep checking, making sure you're not getting it wrong. So those will be all the points. <clears throat> so if we follow around the cylinder and we're using all these points, that gives us 12 points of reference there. So now what we can do is we can 
imagine the curve between them and it's going to be accurate enough for what we're doing so you could imagine if you're doing this on a computer it might do hundreds of points to make it absolutely perfect um, the 90% of things that's not necessary so the best way to do this I find is just very lightly sketch it in and use the curvature of your wrist as well so you see how my wrist is pivoting sort of around my little finger there that can be quite helpful but mainly if you do just slightly sketch it in you can usually just see when it's wrong and you can fix it from that point Alright, so what I'm going to do there is highlight the actual pattern here. Make sure it's nice and easy to see. So there's your pattern for your branch. So we've got that bit. Now what we need to do is do the pattern for this uh, the main cylinder here. I uh, usually call it the trunk. And it's going to be the same length. So that's going to be 157. So just make sure we've got enough room, which we do. So I just need to start that, say, 10 mil up. To make sure I can fit it. And I need to drag all these lines up here, which I put on this part. And we might as well go all the way along. So, go right to the edge there, go to this one, this one, that one's slightly off. Last line is this one here, so I'll make sure I draw that up. Right, so I'm going to measure again 157. That's our overall length, so we've got the two pipes the same diameter. So we'll do 157. And I'm just going to highlight the outside of that part.
and same thing as before so we'll do half of 157 Got 78 and a half here so 78.5 Again, this is just for accuracy. So we stepped it out 12 times, we'd probably find we ended up with the wrong measurement. So these lines just have to be light in here. And let's grab that um, set thing for the section here. So I'm going to go up these two. Still set up from where it was last time. So it was slightly small last time, so I may just Work it out a tiny bit and I'll do my lines up the side here. That's worked out really well this time. Now let's square those ones across. Now, so if we look down here, middle part, I've got this D, so if I was to turn this around, D would be there, C, B, and A. So you can see we, can, we start off A and we go B, C to D. And... So the other side would just be symmetrical to that. So we find that middle line we just had. And what we can do is we can go A. Follow A up to the middle line. A. A. B. B that side. B that side. Follow C up. And D all the way up, so that's the last one. So there we have our all our points for our hole. So if I put a label there as well, A, B, C, D, B, C, D. And now we just have to fill that in. So these two parts here are patterns for that one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to stick them together so you can see how it looks. So here you can see we've got our ranch pattern. Um, it's just rolled up. So if you have a look on top of that view there, hopefully you can tell where those lines come from. And that's that part just rolled out like that. And this part here, just like that as well. So that's that part rolled out this way. If I look from this side, that's the end. And that's that part there. So 
So I'll just give you another quick look at that. So it's the shape of the branch. That's the shape of the trunk. You can see straight up and down, that's a round hole. On the side, it's 45-45 there. Get on a bit of an angle, and it's a bit of a funny shape. And same here, if you look straight down, that's a half round there, and those are 45-45. So I'll join them together, and I'll show you what it all looks like in the end. So you see here is the uh, final shape joined together as best I could with a bit of a tape. So looking at down there, that view there, that view there, and just to get an idea, your points here, what these are doing, if we have a look, those should line up with these points here. So they do. So that's what it's all about. Alright, on to the next one.